okay, guys, I want to challenge you on that positioning. How do you stand out? How do you solve your problem better than anyone else for a very specific and defined group of people? An entire city or, an, or every buyer, everyone who wants to buy or sell a home is not a defined group of people. Okay, every uh, retail seller or buyer in Roseburg is not a defined group of people. I want to ask you, is it for people who are looking to relocate? Is it for people who are looking to retire? Is it for people who are looking for new construction? Is it for people who are looking for um, your first house? Is it for people who are looking at downgrading, upgrading? Is it for people who are looking for farm and ranch land? Who are those defined groups of people and how do you serve them better than anyone else? What's up, y'all? This is going to be a huge milestone podcast you guys will remember for generations. Generations, no. You probably won't. But um, this will be the very, very last Trevor Truck Talk that I'm recording on this cell phone. (laughs) Because uh, this cell phone I've had for three or four years now, it's carried me through the vast majority of all of the Trevor Truck Talks, if not all of them. And all the Trevor Truck Talks may have been recorded on this cell phone right here. Uh, I'm not sure. But either way, uh, it's been dropped one too many times. My screen went out over the weekend. Uh, It came back yesterday, (laughs) last night, and it's it's been flashing on and off. So I'm like, all right, I better get the new one. So I just picked up the new one at the store, at the Verizon store, heading home for dinner, and uh, then I'll start anew on the new iPhone 12, apparently. So uh, anyway, guys, what I want to talk about in this one is positioning. We're going through right now at at this company. So you guys have been following my journey. In a a recent podcast, I talked about um, purpose. I talked about, am I going to sell this company? The answer is no. I'm still excited about the mission of the company. I just realized I needed to change my job within the company a little bit to to account for the season I want to be in uh, as a leader and pull out of more of the daily operations so I can focus on what I like best, working on product, helping you guys succeed working on content, working on partnerships, things like that. And so one of the things that we had started to do, you know, we're seven years into the business now, is we said, okay, you know, seven years is a long time. Seven years is a long enough time for the industry to change a lot. Uh, seven years is a long enough time for your company to be pretty darn mature and have some things that worked very well and have some things that aren't working anymore or that are on the verge of not working and being disrupted especially tech companies. And so while we're still growing at a really good clip, you know, we grew last year more than we ever had. There's the possibility that there's people moving around us faster in some areas than we're moving. And within a year, two years, you know, we could uh, start to lose some of that ground and we could uh, start to not resonate and solve the problem for our customers as well as somebody else. And one of the biggest things you want to look at as an entrepreneur is positioning. Now, a lot of people think positioning is a tagline. A lot of people think positioning is the words and just the words in your website. People think positioning is marketing. People think positioning is sales. Think, think pe- people, people think positioning is a couple things you say to a seller or a buyer or a tenant or, you know, or a, a real estate investor or agent in our case. All of those things are influenced uh, by positioning, uh, but they're not positioning. And I want to challenge you if you're listening to this, if you're a real estate agent or an investor, or if you're not an an agent or an investor, and you want to improve your business, one of the first things I'd pull back and and look at if you're an agent or investor or anyone else and ask yourself is, you know, how am I positioned in the market and how am I clearly differentiated from everyone else? And that's something that a lot of people forget to ask that question. If you're an agent specifically, I'm going to call you guys and gals out is way too many agents think your positioning is, hey, I'm an agent. I can help you list homes. I can help you find a home. And uh, I'm local, right? Because that's not your positioning. And so what you end up finding with, with real estate agents specifically is your positioning is, I know you or I don't know you. You're in my friend circle. You're not. Uh, here's my Glamour Shots photo. You like me. You don't. Um, or we're in the rotary together, right? It's like usually proximity. But proximity can only go so far. Okay, proximity can only go so far. Certain people are going to make decisions off of proximity, but when the decision is big enough, they're going to make they're going to make their decision off the positioning, off of which solution is going to actually solve my problem better, not who's closest to me. Um, And that's where positioning comes in. So if you're a real estate investor and you're looking at this and you're going, man, I'm just struggling to win deals against all these other investors, man, 
Yeah, I, I was on a, a clubhouse the other day. Now, if you guys are not on Clubhouse yet, get on Clubhouse. It's amazing. I was on a Clubhouse conversation the other day on the app Clubhouse. And the person said, I'm in a really competitive market with a million wholesalers. How can I ever crack through? Like, what do I need to do differently? And what that person was saying was that person said, I think I need to move to a different market because my market is too competitive. And myself and Tom Kroll, who's a Carrot customer, and other experts on there were like, no, a competitive market means there's something there. It means there's, there's value there. It means there's money to be made in that market. Okay. Um, what the problem is, is you haven't differentiated yourself versus others in that market. So therefore, yes, it's crowded. Yes, it's cluttered for you because you have not positioned yourself in a way that makes you stand out at all. So then you need to go to a different market, a smaller market where wholesalers aren't as prevalent. So your positioning is I'm just one of a fewer number of wholesalers. So I'll have a better chance of getting deals, right? Uh, same thing with real estate agents. Uh, if you're a real estate agent, you're just one of many agents in town and your positioning is, well, shoot, I'm one of many agents or I'm one of fewer agents. Uh, it's going to be hard to win business. If you're thinking about, if you're, if you're looking at it, go, man, there's way too many agents in town. Like, how am I ever going to survive? Has nothing to do with the number of agents. It has everything to do with how do you position yourself in a way to where you are the logical solution for a very specific subset of people. Not for everybody, a very specific subset of people. So positioning is something I'm really good at. I'm passionate about it. You know, it's part of what helped grow Care into an eight-figure business. But one thing I want to challenge you guys and gals on is this, is no matter how good you think you get at something, always reach higher and pull in the expert that's even better than you for help. Like, how do you continue to grow? How do you continue to put your ego in the back seat and look for people who are way better at you at something that you can learn from? So we did that. Uh, a few months ago, I found the world's foremost expert in positioning for B2B tech companies. Her name is April Dunford. And uh, she wrote a book called Obviously Awesome. And you guys can find it on Amazon. I would highly suggest it no matter what business you're in. If you're interested in positioning your company in a way to win in a big way, positioning your company in a way so you stand out in a big way from other companies, whether you're an investor, an agent, a software company, whatever, go buy the book, Obviously Awesome, and go through the process. And so we said, what would be even awesomer than reading her book, Obviously Awesome? We said, what if we could hire the author of this book and have her guide us through the process on our positioning for the next phase of Carrot? And for the previous phase of Carrot, just as an example, y'all, uh, the previous phase of Carrot, the positioning was was simple. Now, it wasn't simple to find the positioning, to discover it, but it was simple once we nailed it. When we first rolled out Carrot, the positioning was essentially, we didn't have one, right? It's like, hey, we have a service that helps you build a real estate investor website quickly, and you can customize it and go, awesome, set it up. And we started to get some customers. And what started to happen was uh, the churn rate, so people canceling was higher than we wanted. People were comparing us against like $9 hosting accounts on WordPress or you know GoDaddy sites or whatever. And we're saying, gosh, but we're not that though. Like we're so much more. And we help you actually get better results. And can't you, can't you like imagine how many leads and deals you're probably losing because your website doesn't convert well or because it's not ranking in Google? You know, we're not anywhere near, we shouldn't be compared at all to GoDaddy or Wix or Weebly or you building your own website on WordPress. Like we're not comparable. So why are people comparing us? And we started to dive into it and figure out, well, our positioning was all wrong. When you landed on our website, we were just like everybody else. It was set up a real estate investor website. It's kind of easy. It's pretty quick and it gets results, right? But we said, I think we need to go all in on this performance thing. I think we need to position that if you want results, if you want um, to, to stop losing deals, if you want to stop losing tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in, in deals, if you want to start gaining momentum, if you want to start attracting the highest margin, highest close ratio leads, then Carrot is your solution. Okay. Rather than, you know, rather than uh, going and building a custom site where you're probably not going to build it in a way where it's going to perform as good page speed wise and SEO wise and conversion wise, you might think it's fancy. You might think you want to do that. You might think it's helping you stand out, but how many leads and deals is it costing you every single year? 
once you nail that position, you find that that's what resonates with people. Then you need to go out and go, let me find and create case studies that support that positioning in a big way and data. Like what can you do to support that in your sales uh, pitch uh, that supports and reinforces that positioning in your market's mind? And so with Carrot, what do we do? And so awesome. Well, let's actually just use like client results. And so we go out there and use data showing our websites converting better than uh, alternatives. We go out there and, and show Google page speed tests on GT metrics or one of those page speed tools and show carrot convert or carrot performing way faster than all other website builders out there. And we go out there and uh, help customers succeed. And then we invite on all these amazing carrot clients to come on carrot case studies or carrot cast episodes to talk about how they got way better results with carrot versus their custom site versus their GoDaddy site and, how they're getting the highest quality leads, and the highest margin deals, and how they're finally getting off of the hamster wheel and getting evergreen marketing, right? It's like we start to find those case studies. And then, it, then you're just out there telling those case studies, educating people on your product and telling your story. I mean, that's, that's really it, okay? Once you nail that positioning, then it's about stories. It's about telling your client's stories. It's about telling the story of how you came to that same problem yourself, like myself. I came to that same problem myself where Back in the day, I had websites and I thought a website was a website and I set up websites. And I had discovered after a while that I was getting traffic, but it wasn't converting. This is way before Carrot, way before me even doing this for other people. And I said, well, shoot, why is that? Well, I need to learn conversion rate optimization. Started to learn that. I started to tweak some things, do a bunch of split tests. Things started to convert better. And then I'm like, well, shoot, how do I get more traffic? Well, I started to learn SEO and how to do all that stuff and, and what Google likes. And you, you get the story here, right? I tell the story. Then I, then I have my epiphany on the other side. I'm like, man, when you do all these things right, and it took me hundreds, if not thousands of hours and tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years to figure all this out myself, then we ended up developing a solution that does this for you, makes it way easier for you to have results and, and reclaim those deals that you're losing right now and reclaim your life and get off that marketing hamster wheel, right? And then we back it up with data, back it up with case studies and teach our product. So you might be asking, how is this relevant to you as an agent or an investor? So uh, when I ask you this question here, it's like, what is it that you're actually really solving for your client as a buyer or seller? Okay. And how do you do it differently than others? So if someone were to look at you and say, this is why I work with Sally, or this is why I work with Mark, or this is why I chose to sell to ABC home sellers, you know, ABC home buyers. Why is it that they chose you? Is it because you're faster? Is it because you are more trustworthy? Is it because you have a bigger track record? Is it because you pay more than anybody else? Maybe that's your positioning. Hey, we're a house buyer and we actually like, like shop. I want you to shop all of all, all everyone else, get every author uh, offer and then come to us and, and we're going to beat everything else. We are the highest offer. We're going to guarantee the closing, blah, 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 blah. Maybe that's your position. And maybe your position, like I said, is trustworthiness and, and we're going to follow through. Hey, you know, let's get case studies now of, of sellers who had other investors fall through and back out on deals. All right. Tell those case studies, tell those testimonials, show, show them the process by which you have a tight process. Show them your, 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 your track record, uh, show them your guarantee. Hey, we have a guarantee that if we make an offer, we will close on it or I'll pay you a thousand dollars. Like how can you position yourself well? So people know, fully believe and see how you're different. If you're a real estate agent, how are you an agent? Not just, hey, I'm Sally smiling in this market and I can help you buy or sell a home. That's not positioning. That's throwing up a hope and a prayer that you have someone close enough in proximity to you that they feel that they want to work with you, but it's not positioning, right? That's, that's they're closer to you and they didn't do any extra work to find someone who might actually be a better solution for them. Or they feel bad about going with somebody else because they're your friend, right? So what positioning is, is ask those people, why did you end up choosing me? And, and ask yourself, like, how, how are you creating an advantage where people want to work with you more? Well, maybe it's your marketing. And maybe the way that you market your, your listings is better than anyone else. And you sell 30% uh, faster and for 10% more than every other agent. Okay, maybe that's your positioning. And so on your website and in your marketing, that's what you talk about, right? Uh, get the most out of your, uh, your home sale guaranteed and then show data. You know, Spokane... Uh, real estate data shows we sell for 15% more on average and 30% and faster than any other agent in the Spokane area. And now let's back it up with case studies and testimonials and customer stories. Here's customer stories 
reinforcing that positioning. Hey, we worked with another agent before and they couldn't sell our house in four months. We signed up with Sally and she sold it with six above asking price offers in a matter of three weeks. And it was for even 10% more than we thought we could even sell it for. And then you have a bunch of those, right? Then you have those in ads and you have that in your listing presentation. Guys, that's positioning. Okay, so who's the hyper-specific group of people you can help the most? Well, that's where we talk about niching down, okay? So let's say let's say that you're commercial, you're a commercial expert, and your niche is people who are looking to buy or sell a piece of commercial real estate for investment or to put a business in. Okay, so that's your hyper-specific group of people. Now, what's your niche? Okay, your niche might be that you help people find the perfect piece of property 10 times faster. Your niche might be that you actually have a turnkey solution where if people end up engaging with you, uh, you will actually fill their place with tenants for them, right? So maybe you have that solution where you not only sell the properties, but you also uh, you also help, help them fill them with, with your listing or with your uh, your lease services. That's positioning. Hey, one, one, one stop shop, we're going to help you pri- buy an amazing property and we're going to help you fill it. And it's a turnkey all in one spot. I'll help you do the whole thing. Uh, make your, uh, you make your investment amazing. Okay, guys, I want to challenge you on that positioning. How do you stand out? How do you solve your problem better than anyone else for a very specific and defined group of people? An entire city or, an, or every buyer, everyone who wants to buy or sell a home is not a defined group of people. Okay, every uh, retail seller or buyer in Roseburg is not a defined group of people. I want to ask you, is it for people who are looking to relocate? Is it for people who are looking to retire? Is it for people who are looking for new construction? Is it for people who are looking for um, your first house? Is it for people who are looking at downgrading, upgrading? Is it for people who are looking for farm and ranch land? Who are those defined groups of people and how do you serve them better than anyone else? I want you to write those things down and think that through and say, if, if someone in that defined group of people were to see this, these words, uh, and then looking at your other competition, would they immediately notice how you are better? Would they immediately notice how you stand out? Or do you just look like every other agent? Hey, this person, they do farm and ranch, but they're just like everybody else. They list farm and ranch properties and that's it. Okay, what is your advantage? Is it that you've been in, in farm and ranch for 30 years and that you actually have access to more farm and ranch buyers than anyone else in the state of Oregon and can sell your property faster? Is it because you understand farm and ranch so much better than anybody else? You can actually help identify the other uses of that property and get 30% more out of um, out of the property in the value because you see the value that other agents can't see because they don't have as, as much experience and you're the expert in, in extracting value out of farmland that others can't see. You know, what is it, guys and gals? I want you to write that down and challenge yourself because if you're looking in a market and saying it's busy, if you're looking in a market and saying, how do I win in this market? If you're looking in a market and saying, man, it's cluttered. It's really hard to compete. Maybe I need to do these extra marketing things. Maybe those extra marketing things are not the problem. Maybe it's that you're doing plenty of marketing, but people aren't choosing you because you don't have good positioning because they're choosing someone else who seems like a better option. And I want to challenge you on this. I want to challenge you to nail your positioning. I'm going to report back to you where our positioning ends up landing. It's probably going to be around the evergreen side of things. Uh, okay. And I want to ask you guys, would that be useful if we did some sort of workshop or training on positioning on how to position yourself well as a real estate agent or an investor? Go find me on Instagram, trevor.mock, that's trevor.mauch. Find me on IG, y'all. Uh, friend me up, follow me over there, and then DM me. If that's something you think would be interesting for us to do, a whole series on positioning on the Carrot Cast or a workshop or a webinar, let me know. Uh, and then we can see if that might be something we can pull off sometime in the next quarter or two to help you guys and gals position way better and win the market. So we're working with April. I'll report back to you. We're doing three workshops this week with her. We should have our positioning done by Friday, our new positioning. And then you're going to start to see some new things come in the market based on that new positioning that I'm extremely, extremely excited about. So y'all have an amazing rest of the day, amazing rest of the week. We will talk soon. I love you guys to death. And let's have an amazing year also. Talk soon.